when studying the country of Morocco and connecting to the land and the architecture, I really wanted to work on these mini landscapes. So I'm working on my Arches hot press watercolor paper and I already taped these down with artist tape and they're four inch by eight inch, but feel free to work any size you want. But I kind of wanted this kind of vertical look. And then I have my acrylics um, to the right and then I will be working with my natural pigments. Now I can source some of these and then I have a couple online sources that you can purchase um, um, the natural pigments if you have an interest in those. Now I'm going to be working in my burnt sienna um, stabilo pencil and charcoal is a great way to draw out the landscape. Um, and you know I'm going to pull up some of these photographs. All of these are from Unsplash just to inspire um, different destinations that you can work on. For my three pieces, I'm going to be focusing on the Sahara Desert, uh, Chefchaouen, which is the blue city above, and Essoria, um, or Sesoria. So, um, but there's other places you can look into Fez, you can look in Tangier, um, Casablanca, Marrakesh. Um, I will list some of those cities in our document. Um, so if you wanted to go a different route, but the, you know, these can be so inspiring and all of these photographs are in my Unsplash page, but you could really focus on some of those big um, monuments um, and these mosques. Um, you could go a closer in view of the architecture. Um, but I wanted a variety. I wanted um, kind of a desert scape. I wanted to work on um, an ocean scene, and then I wanted to work on kind of this hilltop city, um, you know, with those beautiful blue colors. But here's some more that can get you inspired, more of the markets um, in Marrakesh. Um, you, there's a lot of beautiful colors and, and the Berber textiles. Um, and here's a seascape that I will be working on as well. When starting a landscape, I like to do a quick drawing and, and draw out or map out um, these images onto my paper. So, you know, I'm going to put put these as references on the side. Um, for the Sahara Desert, I have two images. I'm going to be working with the one um, that I put on top, but I'm going to use the camel one as a reference if I want to add that in. Um, and then I debated to do the markets versus a seascape, um, but I do think since I already did kind of a market journal spread that I'm going to do more of a seascape here. Um, so I'll put all three of these to the side as my reference images. And I have selected um, my Burt Sienna Stabilo um, to really, really loosely map out this image because it's water soluble, so it'll move around a little bit once I paint over it. Um, and that kind of brown color is part of my color palette. And I, I just like, sometimes I like to have that kind of neutral color as opposed to a black in the background. Um, so what I'm doing is just really drawing out um, the shape. I'm following the line and again, it's very, very loose because I know I'm going to be painting over it. Um, but I'm starting to focus on where I want the horizon line. Do I want it to be um, really high so you see a lot of the landscape or do I want it really low so you, you see a lot of the sky? So start really thinking of the horizon line placement. Um, and again, just following these lines as you look at the image. Um, and, and this is going to be a very loose sketch once again. Um, but, you know, really focus on where that horizon line is going to go because, you know, if, do, if you do a dramatic horizon line, um, it can be really, really powerful in especially in landscape work. And then doing some a little bit of sketching to show myself where some of these um, really darks are because you really want to establish the darkest darks and the lightest lights, which we'll get into more with our painting. But this allows you to do a little bit of shading so you know where those darks are going to be and, and where the light areas are going to be. 
And I like to hold the, the pencil really loosely. As you can see, I'm moving it around. Um, I'm holding it, you know, a little bit more contained and then I'm holding it very loosely on the side. And this allows for a lot of free movement um, with this because I, I like to do these a little bit more abstractly when I paint them. I'm starting to almost roll the pencil on here. Now, I debated if I want to put the camels in. I'm not gonna put all of them in, but rather um, kind of draw them in as the silhouette um, here in the bottom right. And, you know, I may or may not keep them in the painting, but it does add a little bit of life. So I think I'll just add two of them here. Again, I'm just, I'm just drawing like the, shadow of them, like squinting my eyes a little bit and um, really studying just kind of the in shadow form or shape form. You know, make sure I add the hump um, and, and just kind of the illusion of these camels in the desert. I'm going to uh, fast forward it as I add in the sketches of these two other places. in and just kind of map out some of my darks um, and I'm going to do that with kind of just like a burnt sienna color um, to match the pencil marks um, but I'm starting to look at the photograph and see where the most shadows are on these dunes um, and this will help me I'm just kind of laying it out a little bit and trying to put the darkest areas in First, um, you could go really dark with a Payne's gray um, or you know a burnt umber as well. Um, but you know this this just allows me to kind of um, mark in the darkest areas. Now I I'm going to be painting over some of the pencil marks. I already painted over the camels, um, but I can add that back in and I can add that detail back in. But you know that that was basically the pencil is just a guide for me. Now you can see in the middle picture, I put no detail because I decided I wanted to come in and paint the detail on that one. And then the bottom, just a rough sketch of the ocean view. Um, so you can go into as much detail or as little detail as you want. Um, but then start really looking at the photograph and start looking at the range of um, the range of the tones there and the shadows.
I started taking the same colors and, and this is why I like to work in three at once because I have you know a color palette already picked out and I'm moving these colors into each of um, each of these landscapes so if I have say um, you know this color right here I can put it in like elements of all three of them but I I was just building those base layers. So right, you know, I'm just trying to map out some color onto the paper um, in the background and kind of, you know, build these um, according to shape. Now my middle design, my middle landscape had no drawing on it. So I'm starting to create the illusion of those buildings on the hillside by using my square brush and making marks in different directions and different sizes to to mimic the look of the buildings. Now, um, you know, my bottom photograph, I really came in and just kind of did a wash because being that it's a seascape, I wanted areas of it to kind of have a wash and then by the shore, you get a little bit more of those browns and neutrals in there. Um, so that's just a way I kind of build up um, the background and there's many different ways you could do it. You could go really dark to light, um, but I like to just kind of put a wash and, and, and a base layer in the background of all of them and then build up the details. And I wanted to bring up a, come up, a couple of basics of color theory um, as we're moving along through these landscapes. And those are tint, shade, and tone. So tint is essentially adding a lighter value of a pure, to the, a pure hue. So um, adding white to your color. So if you had red, you're adding some white. So my top color, I'm, I'm using kind of just a couple um, colors and I'm just adding a little bit of white to it as well as um, a shade. So I'm adding black to the pure color. Or for me, I'm using, um, I like, instead of black, I like to add the complementary color to darken it if I need to. Now, I do have, um, you know, different hues here of a same color. So I kind of have like my nude or tan color. Um, then I have more of a burnt sienna and a crimson. But if I wanted to mix them, that's kind of what I'd be talking about. And then tone is essentially a gray version of the hue. So um, it's made by adding gray. Um, so that, those are just some basics that are really uh, helpful. And um, if you hear some of those as we move along, um, you know, those, that's the meaning of each. I wanted to talk a little bit about each of these locations that I selected, um, the Sahara. Um, you know, these beautiful, beautiful orange dunes, um, blue skies, camel trekking. I mean, you know, you can camp under the stars. I mean, it's just what you would imagine for the scene of adventure when you visit Morocco and something that I really feel like you couldn't miss. Um, it is a fair amount of time away from Marrakesh. So, you know, plan it out. There's plenty of um, guides that will take you or shuttle services um, that, you know, it'd be worth, I think, spending a few days at least in the desert. Um, so that would be just, you know, a really, uh, to me, very much the epitome of a Moroccan trip and, and it embodies what I would want in my trip. And then we have Chef Chowan, which um, it's really known as this blue city. It's remarkable. Um, and there's so many theories on where the blue came from. It, some say, you know, it was believed um, to be connected to heaven or the sky. Others believe it was a way to keep the bugs and mosquitoes away. Um, but regardless, um, the people of Chef Shawin have kept up this blue color and it is literally everywhere and it is so striking. So I will include, um, you know, a video so that you almost so that you can see yourself walking through. But again, this is on the mountainside um, and it's just these beautiful, colorful buildings, charming cafes. Um, you know, it's just a remarkable place. 
And then at the very bottom, I'm working on Esuera, which is located on the Atlantic coast. And this is a popular beach destination. Now, reading more about it, it is also extremely windy. So if it's a place you're going to visit, know that ahead of time, that it's not going to be just a serene beach location. Um, but it is, you know, a really um, beautiful place. Um, you, you see these blue boats as well, striking buildings, charming sooks. Um, the, the harbor is really busy. Um, so it's just a, another area that I thought was just a really beautiful place that I wanted to create my landscape. Now I'm coming in here with some more details. I'm adding in these blue boats um, in the foreground, which are kind of iconic to this area and region. And, you know, I'm really studying my photograph as I'm doing this. I'm studying the shape, the line, um, going back to the, the, you know, the shades and the tones of the colors um, and trying to add details that way. And again, I'm taking this color that I used on the bottom photograph and I'm bringing elements of that in to my other pieces where I see fit. Um, to really create these buildings, I want to create a variety of different shapes. Now, I like to do abstract landscapes, um, so you will not be seeing me draw it out perfectly. You will see me kind of mimicking the shape um, and the energy of it, but then I kind of take it a little bit more um, on my own route by adding more brushstroke looks um, as opposed to really intricate details. But follow, again, follow your path. What do you like realistic um, architecture drawing? Then go for that. I mean, that would be really amazing to do. But the nice thing about these minis is that they're not overwhelming. Um, when, sometimes when you get a big canvas out and you do a big landscape, um, it you know it can be a little bit overwhelming in the sense that if it doesn't turn out right or if you put things in the wrong place, where these minis almost are ways that I study the area. And then let's say I love one of the landscapes, I could make that into a bigger piece once I've done a little bit of these minis. Um, and these minis, you don't have to do on a loose piece of paper. You could also be working in your journal. If I were traveling there, I'd be doing little sketches in my journal of these landscapes. And then I would come back and take these studies again and, and bring them into bigger pieces. Um, you know, I can really study the ones that I love and that I'm drawn to and make them larger. Um, some people will find that they love mountain scenes. Some people love, you know, really love these seascapes. So, you know, just play it, play it all of them. I, I recommend, you know, if you don't use these three photographs um, or these locations, oh, my, my brush fell off there. Um, if you don't use these three locations, um, you know, pick things that you're drawn to and, and locations when you're studying Morocco that you possibly are drawn to. So I'm mimicking the buildings on this one. There's some buildings at the top of, um, you know, this here area that I'm going to be adding just in white because they're, they're kind of these white coastal buildings as well. And then I'm bringing this white in. Whenever you see the rocks um, in the ocean, you're likely going to see white waves crashing against them. Um, so, you know, look at that photograph in ocean scenes and you're going to see that white um, really, you know, right up against those dark colors. One of the most important things to me to create, not, not in, only in all my pieces, but especially in landscapes, is movement. Um, sometimes the buildings are still, the mountain isn't moving, um, but creating some feeling of life. And I do that by taking my brush stroke and going in different directions. Um, for the seascape, I might be going more horizontally um, and then bring the waves upwards, kind of like they were crashing against um, those rocks. So I'll, I'll take my paintbrush and move up. Um, so, you know, 
go in different directions. Don't go in the same direction for everything, unless it is like you want that long seascape that you want it to go completely horizontal um, and you want that effect. Um, but the, you know, like the buildings here, they're all in different directions. They're side by side. I want to make sure that my brush strokes are going, you know, left to right, up and down, right to left, which will even look different. Um, just to really create some movement and life into these landscapes, even if it's something like a building that's not going to be moving. Now, these dunes or the Sahara Desert, it's going to be moving. Um, the wind shifts the dunes often. So I really want to create that feeling that they could almost move. Um, and I'm doing that by adding a variety of colors, almost more, much more than what you see in this photograph. So I have a lot more darks than what actually is in this photograph. Um, and as well as adding a little bit of my pigment paints, um, my natural pigments to really make it um, bring back that connection to the natural. But again, the angles and shifting my brushwork and the, and the way that I'm doing the angles in order to create that movement of the dunes in the in the Sahara Desert. Now we will continue and I'm gonna keep adding in more detail in our second part of our lesson. Um, and then we'll bring in a few more mediums. So some soft pastels to really add in a little bit extra layer and, and that's very saturated color on top.